patients in the beginning was very difficult. People were paranoid and feared that HIV AIDS could be transmitted through touching or being in the same room with an infected person. This discrimination also extended to the medical profession where doctors were reluctant to deal with patients who were admitted with symptoms of HIV AIDS. Because of the stigma associated with the, the disease, there were people who were reluctant to have an AIDS clinic in the medical patient. Somebody arrived in a casualty with the severe signs of AIDS, severe waste loss, diarrhea, loss rash. And somebody, a senior person, told that the relatives who brought the person to hospital, that they better take her home alive because it's cheaper than taking a dead body because there was nothing that could be done. I felt bad about this. In 1991, my friend was affected by HIV, by Slim. So we started looking after him. But when he was going to die, he was very sick, he was put separate in a room and nobody would enter there except the parents and I as his friend. Realizing the psychological impact this kind of stigma had on people living with HIV, their families and caretakers, Tasso created a philosophy which revolved around living positively with HIV AIDS and dying with dignity. It is Tasso that brought all these ideas of, of how to handle a person with HIV. But then indeed it became a philosophy because everybody would say he, he needs Tasso. Uh, meaning that, you know, all this problem you need Tasso. When the people came to this ISS clinic, we were the first counselors. We'd first give this person a hug. So the doctor now had clear evidence that if this non-medical person really strongly believes that this person can be hugged. How about me with the science that I have? For us, we started with the individual. How do we help this individual cope? And we went to the family, then we went to the community, and then, you know, so that they, they, wherever they are, they are assisted. We started things like the daycare center. When you come, as you wait for the doctor, we used to do the sensitization. Rather than you sit there idle and focus on your disease, Organizations and community leaders also set up clinics, outreach programs, and drama groups as strategies to demystify the disease. Counselors from these organizations also provided support to families, caretakers, and children orphaned by HIV AIDS who were unable to support themselves. At that time, it was just talking to these people, encouraging them and giving them hope that they can live. Most people were positive at that time, they were having a challenge of food and nutrition. So obviously, I think with support from World Food Program, they had the food that was being brought to these patients. Then they would give beans, then they would give rice and cooking oil and powdered milk. For more interesting stories and artifacts, Go to www.historyofhiv.ug To participate in project research, free HIV counseling and testing, contact 0751-051-866 or 0779-452-176.